Hello world and welcome back to another video. In this uh, video, I felt it was a good time to maybe tackle or approach or revisit the uh, multi-sig wallet or smart contract that Elrond has provided as one of their smart contract examples. Before we dive in though, I um, wanted to bring up this that the Elrond community, uh, somebody posted up in their GitHub Elrond Network, under docselrond.com, which is pretty much the documentation that we usually follow in a lot of our videos here. Um, but the uh, user in the community here, Bogdan, posted a, uh, a call out to everybody who's been using the uh, docs and everything and trying to figure out how to develop code, um, you know, um, do any type of work on the Elrond network. Pretty much ask them all to come together and collaborate and provide what suggestions they may have to have the Elrond team provide uh, some updates and better, better service to, you know, upgrading documents to allow more people to start building. You know, um, Elrond's main mission was to increase the um, adoption of blockchain technology, which they have, you know, from, from a front-end user perspective. They have a really, they did a really great job at, at making a nice platform that any newcomer will definitely feel right at home and easy to use, especially with the MyR app. And, and things like that. But there's the other side of the token, and no pun intended, but um, basically, we need to, I feel that the Elrond team need, should also focus in on their technical documents to provide adoption on the developer front and the back end. Providing better documentation will definitely help that out. I probably have this link in the uh, description for this video. Feel free to join there and take a look and, and provide your feedback. Uh, it does require you to have a GitHub account, so just sign in with that. In fact, on here, when I was reading through everyone's questions, somebody did bring up um, that they wanted a Mac video, which was my last video that I did. And, um, you know, I kind of went on here and I was actually working on the Mac video, but also saw that there was some um, demand for the multi-seg here. You know, a couple of people ask. But yeah, um, that's pretty much, much how that works. I just wanted to bring that up. Um, but as an example here, let me... Um, Sorry, let me just uh, get this going here. I want to show you all uh, in this video smart contracts and what smart, uh, sorry, multi sig uh, contracts here. And then what they are is essentially smart contracts. Um, that are pretty much configured in such a way that they are uh, acting as a wallet. So it's like this smart contract you can think of as being a type of user's wallet, like one of the users here. And that wallet can essentially be, you know, uh, used just like any normal wallet. So, the way it works is, usually there will be a user who created the smart contract. And that user will choose a set of board members, if you will, a nice little quorum. Um, so that way they are added into the contract as giving permissions to vote, approve, and to have this shared wallet 
or, or contract, um, go off and be delegated to perform tasks uh, on behalf of all the voters here in their favor. And that way, um, it puts more security because you need uh, at least a collaboration or consensus uh, voting to have this wallet do something versus if it was just a single independent person's wallet, like we let's just say it's this person right here. If a hacker comes in, uh, takes their wallet and their keys compromised, well, that user's wallet is now uh, somebody else's, right? But with the um, um, smart contract here, the uh, bad actor hacker, you know, they can't attack this as easily as they would a single person in this example. Um, basically, what happens is, you know, since it takes everybody to vote in, right, to the smart contract, you can have the logic be three out of the four approvers. Um, once the contract gets three favor votes out of four, out of the four people, it will then be allowed to do the action like send a transaction to a person's wallet or things like that. So if a hacker, um, since the smart contract is uh, not easily hackable or attainable for the hacker, they could go after one user more easily, right? Either, you know, some exploits in web plugins, web wallets, um, pop-ups, phishing attacks, anything that sells, installs malware on your local machine, this person's passwords or seed phrase could get stolen. But with the smart contract, especially an upgradable one that this multi-sig is here, um, the author who authorized it also can remove one board member, or they can add a board member to the contract. So it's a it's a pretty nifty little piece of technology. Okay, and. Uh, I wanted to show you this too. Um, I first got involved with smart, um, I'm sorry, multi sig uh, wallets um, when I was using Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin. And that was a Genosis multi sig wallet, is one of them. And this does this provides a great service. Um, any Ethereum-based blockchain can pretty much provide the uh, multi-sig functionality for that. What um, what is difficult is um, usually um, all of this here is not easily found on the Elrod network. Um, Fortunate to say, I think Blue Wallet There you are, so, so these wallets here um, They can provide a multi-sig function, functionality for Bitcoin as well But um, I came in um, To this project by Terra Station um, So you may or may not know of blockchain called Terra, the one that was infamously uh, famous for their algorithmic stable coin that apparently um, uh, it got compromised and it shot the, the whole entire project in price down, but um, yeah, you know, since then, it, you know, it got some bad rap, but their wallet had this really cool feature where um, you could. Sorry, let's see. This uh, computer I haven't fired up. I usually have a image for all my um, crypto interactions there, kind of isolated for protection.
Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but um, you could actually see here there's a multi-sig, center multi-sig, right? So you actually um, put in, now this is real difficult to see here, give me one second. It, it, the one thing that does suck is because I do have this on, uh, on the, uh, an image here, Windows image, the graphics gets all messed up. Ugh. So hard to just find something. Well, anyway. So you have a multi sig, um, sign a multi sig function right here. And you can see that you have the multi-sig address, um, that will be the provide the voter, and the multi-sig will generate a, a hash that you have to confirm and paste in. This will generate one to answer this, and you use algorithms to pretty much match and prove that this user is the person who's indeed um, authorized to sign off on that. So, um, let's see if I can. There's my uh, multi-sig address right here, and you can see that if this wants to provide some type of action, right, like add or send tokens, this this wallet will generate a hash. And I will then have to log out of this wallet. Or here we are, post a multi-sig. And then, usually you would provide this info, you know, and uh, go into your other wallet. And sign off on it. There you are, so that's all I wanted to show you for, it's kind of a bad example, but, um, to get the picture that, you know, of how multi-sig was working in the other environment, that's what got me involved. And what I did was when I got on board with the Elrond project, I went ahead and researched to see if they had any type of functionality within their um, web wallets or their mobile wallets to see if they had any type of multi-sig functionality the way that Terra Luna did. Um, 
Unfortunately, I, they did have a solution, but unfortunately, it, it wasn't integrated into a nice user-friendly interface. Instead, it's, it, it's just a, a smart contract that they have under the uh, um, the Elrond Network GitHub repository. It's under the contracts and examples here. And you can see all the different examples in there as well. But unfortunately, um, in order to download off of GitHub by, you know, cloning it, you actually can't uh, just get it individually. You have to go all the way out to the Elrond Waza Mars. That's where you can do the get clone command. But I'll show you that in a moment. But yes, you know, um, when I first came onto Elrond, their web wallet was very nice, it had a lot of functionalities. Only in DevNet right now, they have the functionality to um, mint NFTs and tokens, but not in the production line just yet. So, um, after some bruising around to find out if they did have a multi-sig uh, solution, how to use it. Because I love multi-sig and security. The more secure it is, the more comfortable I am. It does require a level of um, knowledge as far as, you know, the knowledge required um, in, in the blockchain space, dealing with multi-sigs on its own just from a user perspective is kind of a higher level for most common folk. But, you know, the more you do, the more secure it is, right? It's not about convenience, but security. But, um, inside here, they didn't really provide an example. They just kind of give you an abstract and a scenario and a brief overview of, you know, some of the things it can do. For example, uh, you know, by default, when you create a multi-sig smart contract, the smart contract out of the gate, by default, is not payable. Uh, they did this uh, as a security precaution because if you spin up this multi-sig wallet send it funds but you lose the keys because you didn't write it down somewhere and now those funds are stuck on there so that that's that makes sense right from a developer perspective um so you know they tell you these things like oh so by default it's payable no uh, non-payable you have to use deposit commands when sending transactions to it but it doesn't tell you how right so it took me so long to decipher, to pull information out, um, that this documentation was just failing to provide. So, without further ado, I'll get right into it now. I want to give you some context and everything here, my personal experiences. So, thank you for sticking around for that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create or open up a new, um, a new Visual Studio Code instance here. All right. So let's go ahead and open up that location. We're going to start this from start to finish on how to work with this, uh, multi-sig smart contract here. So I did a couple of, I did a bunch of dry runs to try to get this down as you can well see from all my uh, previous attempts here. So let's see. So we'll go ahead and create our folder. This will be the thing that we'll work in. Okay. 
and I'm just going to create a new file and create this uh, as the notes that I'll provide uh, in the description below of all the examples that we'll be working through in this video. So, we'll go ahead and begin here. One of the things that we need to do is, now that I have Visual Studio Code open, I just want to take some a quick moment to walk through some of the functionality of it. Um, it is very important here. So, for Visual Studio Code, um, I recommend creating a shortcut, a hotkey on your keyboard, to open up and create new folders. And as we navigate through, you'll find this very convenient. You can go to File, Preferences, and then down to the, sh to the shortcuts here. And you can see the hotkey right there, Control K, Control S. So, Control K, Control S. And then I look for Creating Folder. Or, there we are. So I set this to shift alt n. So inside here, when you have the Explorer pane open, now if I do alt shift n, I can create a folder. So I'll just create an example there called wallets. You can do that again. Create another one uh, called contracts. But as you can see here, it, it's in uh, a level down. So, do want to show you to make sure to be in the certain directory. Um, you can use your mouse to click in and out, but you can also use your arrow keys up and down. Um, if you're in a directory, it'll be highlighted. As you can see, um, when it's inside a wall, you can use the left arrow key to go up a folder and collapse it and move around. And that will be very helpful as you continue to use this software here. And if you do a control tilde, opens up the terminal on the bottom for easy access, can develop code inside here and paste it on the bottom. <clears throat> and also, if you um, have multiple s screens open here on the top, you can also do control page up and page down to cy cy cycle through them there. So we'll start off with this running this script uh, or this command four times to create four wallets. So for this, I like to be inside the wallets folder that I just created. We're going to run this uh, four times. I'm pretty much going to follow the example here. So let's do that one. See. Hmm. Something not go right here. Have the command something variable print it.
Hmm, this is very interesting. Hmm. Very odd. I'm not entirely sure why this is not working. Oh, you know what? The command. <laughs> there we are. I didn't need to go inside the folder. Because my directory is already pointing there. There we go, that looks good. It's good to you can see the making errors on live with you all. Alright. Now this command, what it does is it actually generates the mnemonic, cuts it, um, and just feeds the 24 phrase directly into the printf variable wallet. So that way it feeds it back in. What it does is it actually creates the seed phrase as the name of the wallet. It's bad in practice if you're keeping this as a security thing, but for all intents and purposes in development, it's just easy to see what the seed phrase is, as well as, the, you know, public address in the PEM file. Because the PEM file won't save your public seed, your private seed. So I just like to do that to, for development purposes here. So I'm going to just create uh, a couple of folders. I go up. Right. See, I didn't exit out, so I'm going to actually. Move that up and fix that folder real quick. There we are. And I would also do is I just kind of so, excellent. So now we have the folders of all the people that are going to be, um, the board members of the smart contract and Adam's going to be our author. And the three other will be candidates of the party. Um, the board members who can vote or post in a proposal for the contract to do something, the multi state contract to do something. Now we'll go ahead and make our way to the faucet on the DevNet. We'll grab some test e gold so that way we can play around in the environment. That was an interesting error. Maybe I had a 
cookie or session catch that. Give me that warning. As you can see, I had none in there. Hmm. Almost done here. And you know, these videos are going to be very long. And in fact, there's so much um, examples I'm going to wa walk you through here that this is easily a three part video. So. It's just part one for now, so we'll see how far we get and how long it takes. There you are. Alright, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and log in with Adam though. And keep him as, as our example here. Excellent. So we all got some eagle to spend. So now we'll go ahead and move on. So now, uh, we're going to set up our workspace. So let's go ahead and click inside here to be the main folder for our workspace. Do control shift B. You see, you can type in Elrond setup and this will pop up. And I'll install the folder and get it ready to be an Elrond workspace here. Once that's done, go ahead and download the multi-sig contract. There's uh, three examples of how to do this. Um, one, we'll do an example here, is to use the Elrond Explorer. And that's right here. Once we have set up the workspace, we can download the repository. And the beauty part of this is it's made readily available and it's directly here, and you can pick out that one specific smart contract. You don't need to d download it all, like the uh, repository on the web page here. So, you can click on the button, and for this one, I'm going to call this uh, 01 Multi Sig Eagle Explorer. go back to our directory, you should see it start building out in here. Some pop-ups, there it is. So that's our first example. And here's the smart contract, and you pretty much do the build out of there. The other method is using the uh, git clone. On the command line. Whoops. So we'll just go ahead and clone that this repository here. But notice what happens. Let's call this one zero to a multi sig There we are. Now you'll notice it downloaded um all this other extra stuff. But we're interested in the contracts folder and the examples right there. And there's the multi sig, so you can copy that. And extract extract that out. So now I can rename this one. There we 
¿no? So now the last one will be this is my uh, favorite one. And that is using the ERD command. So right out of the ERD pi command, they have this uh, ticker called uh, template. And essentially that is everything we saw in Explorer and the GitHub. So it's built in to make a call out to download it within the ERD pi uh, SDK, which is kind of nice. Call this one zero three. Well, they say command line. And there we are. Fantastic. So, out of all the preferred methods, either the explorer and the command line is my favorite way. It's a lot quicker. So let's go ahead and create another one. This will be the one that will work in. The multi sig. So now that we have Oh so, so used to always Copying and pasting in command line here. It keeps messing me up. Alright, so now we can build our contract. Um, let's see. I wonder if I have to be in the directory to run this, but we'll see. Um, it's kind of like a repetitive multi sig, multi sig. Let's see if that works. Usually, if this runs. You'll see like an out, out, an output folder and some additional files which compiled it. So, All right, so now that we have it built out, excellent. So now that we have our sample wallets and they are all funded, we can use one of them, Adam, the author, to now who has a uh, faucet money, we can now pay for the gas to deploy the smart contract to the blockchain and get it kind of uh, uh, minted over there, if you will. Um, one thing that I did want to say is, um, making use of the Elron tool website, it comes in very handy. You may see us, or you may see some commands that is hexadecimal, um, which is the raw data off of 
the um, Explorer, and other times um, through the, most of the examples and arguments in the ERG pod, I'm going to try and do this as human readable as possible. Um, so you'll see me do that. But this is a great tool to have at your arsenal to help decipher or troubleshoot um, when working with these smart contracts. Now, the reason being is because smart contracts, like a multi-sig right here that we're working with, um, you don't really know what those endpoints are to interact with. Um, so you have to have the open source code available for you to research and study to know what type of arguments to pass in your ERD PI commands and to some degree the ERDJS. For example, um, you know, perform action, adding board members, add a proposer, uh, propose to move a fund around or do an asynchronous call. You know, you wouldn't know. Unfortunately, the blockchain, or as of right now, there's no ERD command, ERD pi command, or something to query a smart contract to see what endpoints are available. You know what? It's just one of the downfalls. I try to check with the community, but they said no. So it requires you to look through the smart contract and figure out all the variables and what's expected in them. And that way you can kind of get a better guess of how to construct your ERD pi commands with a function and the arguments that follows. It took me a lot of attempts and tries to try to spaghetti code this all together. So, let's go ahead and grab, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's go ahead and grab our examples here. We have Adam, Candy, George, Abby. Okay. Fantastic. So now that we have their addresses, we can now kind of start chipping away at building it up here. That's how to deploy it. Now later on, um, I'll show you how to, instead of passing the variables like this, you can construct an erdpy.json file that has all of this done for you. Um, we'll work through that in later videos, but for now we're just doing it uh, from the, from scratch way. So as you can see here in my previous example, I was using hexadecimal. Um, the way that this is constructed is, um, if you look in here, you'll see that it's required to have a quorum, which is expecting a number, a unit size, and then the board. So then after that, it'll be um, addresses that it's looking for. So I was using the number for, there's going to be, <clears throat> this uh, multi-six smart contract will require three votes of approvals, and I provided four addresses here. Okay. Now, on the README, it was kind of unclear, but I, I think the, per, the author was supposed to be um, added as a, as a board member, a proposer, or a voter, or a prover, I forget, by default. But um, when I tried it, it didn't work. 
but it, it was a perfect use case for us to exercise the uh, command to add a board member to him. So we'll do that, despite the mistake. So what I'll do is I'll give, this time instead of hex, just, just a uh, decimal number. And I'm not going to provide the author's um, address for this, but the other ones. To test to see if the author is indeed added support number. Same to the actual one here. There we go. So I have one, two, three, and we're not adding Adam. Go ahead and run this command. Alright, so it looks like we got our smart contract address. And if we look on the Explorer, you can see that we deployed a smart contract. If we just follow it to the Explorer, you can see that we deployed it. And in the logs, we can see the smart contract right there. It coincides with that 3K LS. can load that one up. You can see all the info there. In fact, um, load back. Yeah, I wonder if we can also see... Right, so that's the author, that's the uh, smart contract, that's the author, right there, that's the smart contract address. Notice here, by default, properties are only enabled upgradable, readable, but it's disabled for the payable aspects. And this is um, set by default, unless you... We'll specify otherwise, and I'll show you that in later videos, but for the um, intents and, uh, intent and purposes of this video, we'll just run with this for now. Okay. It'd probably be a good idea to probably grab that. Alright, so now what we'll do is kind of play around here. So, inside the smart contract, too, another way it helped me uh, troubleshoot or figure out how to get these commands going was following the Mondos. The Mondos files pretty much shows us examples of how to send interactions to, to the smart contract here. And I use this to kind of replicate or reverse engineer how to 
properly construct the the command to have that to interact with that uh, multi sig wallet there. So you'll start to see some patterns here, like the wallet, smart contract of the address, the multi sig, the action to perform, the function, some arguments that help me figure out how many arguments and what type of arguments to provide. So, you know, following these is a good uh, reference. Um, let's take a look. I'll take the uh, contract here. Uh, the get quorum command. Run that here. I usually put semicolons so that way I can run all these commands at once. So we're going to have Adam run the get quorum to query the quorum number, get the number of board members, and then we also have Patty trying it. Uh, the same command to show that they both can interact with the smart contract. So we'll see that start firing off. In the smart contract, you'll see it populate here with everybody querying it. Quorum number here. Looks like we can see that it requires three votes anytime this uh, multi sig contract uh, requests an action needs three approvers. Interesting, I only see some kind of something. Hmm. Well. So now we'll go ahead and practice um depositing funds into the wallet. Just constructing my Patty, Patty, George, Candy, yeah. so we got everyone. Now remember that I put these uh, semicolons there, so if you want to run these one at a time, you can. 
but you can copy all the way down. So in these commands, what we're doing is we're sending three eGold from all the users' wallets and they're all throwing it into the multi-sig contract. And notice that they have to use the deposit command. So they're all pretty much going to be sending their eGold on over and funding the contract. And you have to use that deposit uh, argument to, to get it in there because it'll just get rejected if you don't have it. You can see all the deposits come in. There's 12 eagle now inside the multi-sig uh, contra. And you'll see their number diminished by three. Now, watch when uh, I try to send them without the deposit function. There you should go. But other times when you deal with other smart contracts and they try to convert or swap token for you, create a token, when it goes off to the meta chain to you know, the function that's built into the blockchain protocol layer, when it goes in Minson and tries to send it back to the folder, it can't, unless you provide that, um, that function there to deposit it. Because if I were to just send it, I think, uh, let's see. Actually, if I send it out here, let's see. Is, try to send it, but it's instantly failed and returned. So sending value to non-payable contract. So that's why we always have to do that. I wonder if we can do this. Put the deposit down here. Whoops. This will work. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go right along here. Go ahead and take a look at some of the other commands here. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Adam propose to send three um, e-gold from the, the multi-sig contract wallet, three from here, and send it to Adam's wallet. So 
So we're calling the smart contract. This is one of the um, endpoints here, right? So provide it the address, the amount of eagle to send from it. And these two are additional options and arguments. It turns out uh, from here, I think it was proposed, multi-sig proposed. So you see address, the amount, optional function arguments. So let's go ahead and do this. This is when I did the dry run before this video, but it showed me that Adam couldn't authorize it because he wasn't a board member. I thought, hey, thought since he was the one who created the smart contract, he was already added on as a board member. There we are. So it's like, why? Let's see, propose. And let's see. Only board members can propose. See? So in that case, I went ahead and sent the proposal from Patty. Struck that right there, looks good. Let's go ahead and propose to send it. All right, so we got the polls to come in. Looks like it's no problem for her. Look at the logs. And also keep in mind, when you look at the logs of that vote, you can see right here the query number of the request. In this case, this is the first request. Um, the signer has to copy this number down to sign off of. They can query this number, I believe, and that's how you'll know where you're on the Explorer and you can navigate here to see what is in your queue if you're an approver to approve. Maybe some developers, you know, will upgrade a smart contract or something to maybe where there's some functionality to send out a notification to inform the board members that there's a request in queue for their review and approval. Um, but that, that, I digress, that's kind of out of the scope of this video, but just some ideas. So now that we have that, um, we can query it. So we have the first place there for the first one. Get the signers. Okay. Get action to sign. So I wonder. It's this address. Yeah. That doesn't look like Adam's address here. So I think it tells us who, which of the board members proposed it. So if I 
to search for the address here. Oh, oops. Yeah, it's Patty. Patty's address. And that was indeed the individual that was able to uh, query it. So let's let's go ahead and sign off on this. And again, we'll test Adam. Let's test Adam again. Since he was the author, see if he can even approve it. Okay. Function is assigned to approve. Well, we're just going to change this here. Try to sign it. There it is. There's Adam's address and see the failure. Only board members can sign. So I guess even the author of the smart contract's not added by default. So I guess that's a good thing. Uh, so let's go ahead and have um, Candy sign off on this. All right, so Candy has signed off on that. Looks good, right? So now that we have one approval, let's see if we can query this here. So it looks like we got two, two out of the three. And uh, let's try and test, uh, since the smart contract requires three voters and we only got two, let's try and test, see what happens if some somebody prematurely tries to approve the action without the right number of votes here. See, and uh, let's see if maybe we can test Adam real quick again, see if he can even approve it. Farm action, smart contract address, Adam's law, okay. Uh, queries, I'm also going to populate this. to perform action, perform action failed, one board members can press can, okay, okay, it's like we're going to have to add Adam later on, okay. See if the uh, actual board member prematurely uh, 
execute the smart contract proposal. We have the right number of votes. Now we already see that that failed, even though it came from a legitimate board member. The reason why is the quorum has not been reached. All right. Fabulous. So the smart contract's working as expected. Let's go ahead and get uh, George to sign off on this. Got a signature. Okay. Awesome. Let's see if we can get another sign account. Oops. Do we stand? All right, so we got three voters because the proposer, the one who proposed the action in the first place, they're already counted as the first vote, the first yes vote. And then we went ahead and got Candy the sign. So we had two Candy plus the proposer. Check the numbers and Try to run it with just two out of the three votes needed. Failed. Now we got all the approvers. Let's go ahead and sign off on this and have it actually perform the action. This time we're going to use Candy as a person to send this off. Make sure that the arguments is the first queue. There we are. Okay. So we should see uh, the smart contract send three e gold over to Adam's wallet. If uh, all is well. There we go. Okay, so three got sent out. Form action succeeded. Sent. And there it is. Excellent. So let's go up. Let's get Adam to deposit it again. Looks good. Here. All right, we're back to where we started. Fabulous. Uh, 
Now, let's go ahead and add a board member. So... So what we're going to do is we are going to suggest that we add whoops, Adam as a board member. Because as we previously thought that the author would also be added as a board member when you create the smart contract, but it wasn't the case. So let's go ahead, go to our buddy's wallet, Adam. So, ERD Pi, we're calling the smart contract to add a board member in the arguments we're passing in the address to the board member that we are proposing to add. And Patty's going to propose this. Again, this add board member is inside the smart contract here. There it is. And proposals. There it is. Address. That's it. Looks like uh, went to the wrong contract for the previous example. <laughs> there it is. So we're proposing to add Adam as a board member. So we just need two more votes. That should be, I think, the requester, which is Patty's address, right? Let's see. Yeah, two, A, two, four. Two eight two four. You can see that we're adding Adam's address right there. All right. So once you review the request, it's it was number two, second request of the day. So let's go ahead and get this signed off. Put a candy. And we'll get George. And then we'll get the perform action. What I like to do is just run uh, these sign-offs first and wait for that to get onto the blockchain. Smart Contracts uh, Explorer for the multi-sig. And once those come in, I show, oh, you know, I made a mistake. And you know why. It's good that I run through that example. But this was the first, um, from the last approval, this was the first one. So let's change that to two to match the uh, query, the request number for adding item as a 
as one of the board members here, I think also have to do that here. All right, and you'll see that they failed because that request doesn't exist. It already got signed into action and it's already been closed. So let's go ahead and do this. It's almost like um, with these smart contracts, you can kind of use it as a template for like, for example, uh, a DAO, uh, you know, um, decentralized autonomous uh, organization, um, you know, like board members voting something, um, you know, this is pretty much the, the foundation for other things that can happen. Um. Okay, so let's wait for it to come in. We got the two signatures. Looks good. It didn't fail. So we queried and signed the right one. Let's go ahead and sign it all. There we are. Alright, so now, we shouldn't get that nasty warning when Adam tries to, um, when Adam tries to invoke any type of action on the, uh, smart contracts. Let's test it out, okay? Um, let's see. Let's do this. Let's do another send transaction. So Adam three Adam's wallet still at X fifty X fifteen K. Okay. okay, let's send this off. All right, so we're not met with any errors this time. See, yeah, his request went through. So we take a look. There's now the third request in queue to approval. So let's go ahead and approve it. Since uh, Adam initiated, his vote's already in. So again, we'll just grab, uh, this time let's choose the hexadecimal. And you can kind of see how it changes versus passing in the actual, uh, decimal number. and perform the action after it gets all the votes. There we are. And it moved in. And Adam got it. So eat. So let's go ahead and deposit. Alright, 
Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah, so pretty much uh, we just showed that he could do that. So if anybody else were to um, propose, Adam um, also has the rights to sign and vote things in as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop it for right there for this video. And basically what we did is um, pretty much went through all of this here to the interface, setting up your environment, downloading templates, um, then pretty much deploying the contract, getting your committee, your board, setting that up, deploying the contract, and um, kind of doing some basic queries against it and see interacting with it and seeing how it works. And uh, testing, sending funds uh, back and forth between the multi-sig to uh, users addresses and adding a board member um i encourage you to go ahead and play around maybe removing a board member or creating two smart contracts and maybe adding another smart um uh, i'm sorry multi-sig to another multi-sig um you know the possibilities are endless but um in the next video i'm going to continue on and run through some other uh, multi-sig instructions here. And... Let's see. And, and we'll pretty much explore more options here, like getting the smart contract, the multi-sig smart contract to create uh, NFTs, other tokens, uh, actually, and sending those across. Um, and eventually getting all the way up to getting the multi-six smart contract to interact with a previous video we did, uh, the MyR exchange. So you can use your multi-sig to handle the funds with that decentralized exchange instead of, a uh, one individual. So, uh, I'll stop it there. Thank you for, uh, lasting with me <laughs> through this long. I hope you found this helpful and insightful. Please like, subscribe, tick the notification bell, provide feedback, questions, all in the comments area, and I'll try my best to get back to you. Um, and again, check out that GitHub link on how for the team to improve their documentation to help out the overall community. Yeah, I'll be talking to you all soon. Thank you.